me about it. I'm standing there looking at my body. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing like a, like a, I don't know how to explain it, like a silverish, like dress type thing. Mm -hmm. Are you male or female? Male. Mm -hmm. It's dark and I see like like a fire, like a stick with a fire on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm at peace, but I see my body. I was just tortured. Mm -hmm. But I'm okay. All right, so I'd like for you now to let's go back in time in that same lifetime when nothing was happening, when your life was okay. Let's find out a little bit about your life. So let's travel back in time now. Be there now. I have a son. Mm -hmm. um, a dad. And, um, that's my son now. Mm -hmm. I recognize him. Mm -hmm. um, he's wearing, we're both wearing armor. Mm -hmm. How old are you there? I think I'm like 26. Mm -hmm. And how old is your son? I think he's like 14. Mm -hmm. And um, and what is this armor made of? What, what? It's just like a skirt mm -hmm. and then something on our heads. That's, mm -hmm. that's all. It's on your chest. It's just bare. Mm -hmm. I'm very strong. Mm -hmm. And my son's very strong. Is your dad there too? No, I... This is both of you? Just us. So let's find out where you are. Look around you. And let's see what this place is. What's the occasion? There's a tournament. Mm -hmm. Um... There's, oh, it's disgusting. Tell me what's going on. Oh, these people, they, they have long jostling sort, um, big long poles, mm -hmm. and they knock each other off of horses. And it's a big arena, and there's so much cheering. And when someone gets knocked off, they're just trampled by the horse. They're usually, they're dead. It's disgusting. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at these scenes without any judgment. And just report what's happening. My son is excited about it. Mm -hmm. What happens? Um, How old is your son then? I think he's like 14. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if we're spectators. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Let's see what happens. Go through the scene and tell me what happens next. I think it's, I think it's my turn. Mm -hmm. So tell me everything that you do. And I'm going to ride a horse with this pole. I don't know how to call it in, mm -hmm. in English. Mm -hmm. I'm going to knock this other person off. Mm -hmm. And you say that the chest is bare? No, I'm wearing, I'm wearing a guard now. Okay. What are you wearing on the top now? It's 
like um like a guard, a face guard, but there's little slits for my so I can see, but I can barely see. Mm -hmm. I'm so nervous about it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I know my son is watching this and I'm so nervous. Mm -hmm. What's going on through your mind as you're doing this? I just don't want to leave him mm -hmm. and I want him to be proud of me. So what happens now? It's time to go. They open the I think they open these gates. Mm -hmm. And I'm charging at the guy. And he's coming towards me. feel like I'm knocked off, but worse. What happens? I, I think they take me somewhere. Mm -hmm. Let's find out where they take you. It's like a dungeon. What's the reason they take you to this dungeon? I didn't win. I just feel so sad. I know I'm never going to see my son again. I don't know. What happens now? There are some people around me. Who are these people? They... I think I am a prisoner. Mm -hmm. I am a prisoner. I was going on the horse and doing this for their amusement. Mm -hmm. And now I lost. So now they're going to torture me. So I'd like for you to view this as an observer. <laughs> and see what happens. They tie me up. First they whip me. Naked, they whip me. I'm so bloody. But they're so happy. They feel so good doing this to me. It's so disgusting what they're doing to me. How many are doing this to you? Like five. Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to look at these that are whipping you and see if you recognize their souls. I recognize them, mm -hmm. but I don't know from where. Mm -hmm. I know their faces. Mm -hmm. See if you recognize their souls. I recognize one soul. Mm -hmm. So evil. I don't know who this is. Mm -hmm. Very good. Your subconscious mind, your higher self, will recognize the soul. Let's see what happens next. After they are done whipping me, they 
take my thumbnail out and I feel like they're going to do more to me but I think I'm going to leave my body before they do it. Mm -hmm. I feel a nudge to go. All right. They continue torturing me and for their satisfaction, I look like I'm still alive, mm -hmm. but my soul left mm -hmm. the body. As you're watching them doing this to your body, what's going on in your mind? I'm so disgusted with this evilness. This, they're so excited about this. But I'm so grateful that I'm okay. Mm -hmm. That when I didn't know what to expect after leaving the body, and I am so grateful that it's this, mm -hmm. I didn't know I would feel so good and so free. Mm -hmm. So at peace. Can you forgive these men for not knowing yes. what they're actually doing? I forgive them because they're so brainwashed. Mm -hmm. They do not know what they're doing. So let's find out what you do after you leave that body behind. Where do you go? I go home. Mm -hmm. Tell me what home is. What is it like? I feel like it's so beautiful. It's just so amazing. Oh my gosh. Describe it for me. Just so much love. It's unbelievable. Just right now I'm walking in this meadow. Oh my gosh. It's just unbelievable. This birds and butterflies and peace and what are the colors like there? Just like nothing like I've experienced before. Mm -hmm. Except when I was here before. Mm -hmm. But just vibrant and singing. They're singing. Who is singing? Angels it seems like it's an, like an angel. Mm -hmm. What do you look like when you're there? Look at your body. Do you have one? <laughs> I'm an angel. And you're an angel. <laughs> what do you look like? I'm so beautiful. Describe yourself. Are you a male or female angel? I'm a female angel. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I'm so beautiful. Describe yourself. I'm a light, it's a light body, but it's got like a sheer reflection to it. Like if you look at it, you see the color, but I'm light. I'm just translucent, mm -hmm. but when, but I radiate colors. Mm. I radiate so much healing and connected to the earth and to all the humans. So why did you choose to live such a terrible life the last time? What was that all about? I, I wanted to understand why these humans are doing so much negativity. From my perspective, it was hard for me to understand. Mm -hmm. What was your reason? For wanting to understand it. I want to help. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that you help by knowing that? I feel like I... I feel like it helped to know so I could better help the humans. Mm -hmm. And what happened to the one that is your son that you left behind? How do you know him? He, he was sad, but 
he understood that we were prisoners. Mm -hmm. He won his battle. Mm -hmm. So as this angel, do you have a name? Or I am all, Annie, all the angels, but Seraphim. Seraphim? Do you like to be called Seraphim? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Seraphim, what happens after you go home? Are there others like you there? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what happens after you get there? Do you meet with the others? From my human perspective, I meet with my council. Mm -hmm. So what happens at the council? I meet with my guides. Mm -hmm. How many do you have? Five. Mm -hmm. Are they male or female? They look. They look. One looks like a female. Mm -hmm. But they're all. Translucent mm -hmm. or white, but I can see them. What is your role with this council? What do they do for you? We help each other. Mm -hmm. I help them. Now they are helping me. And they tell me how I did. So, how did you do? I did okay, but they don't know why I chose such a hard life. Mm. What do you tell them? I wanted it. I wanted to experience suffering. I wanted to understand why humans do that to each other, and I understand. It's because of this brainwashing is not their fault deep down. They are still love. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to experience it. So what do they tell you? Is this something that's needed in the future? Yes. For what purpose? It's needed to have compassion it's needed to play different roles, to have understanding of each part in humanity. But this life is still affecting the life of Sarah. Why is it affecting her so much? Because she needs to understand not to Empathy and compassion are two different things. She needs to not be so empathetic, not to take things in, but to rather be compassionate and understand that everybody is where they are for a reason. Don't try to take everybody's suffering. Don't try to take everybody's pain. That is their pain. But you can be compassionate and understand they are just playing a role. They are just on their own experience learning like you are. Everybody is 
at their own level doing what they need to do. So besides empathy, empathy and compassion, where does judgment fit into that? <sighs> she could expand more without judging herself so much. Mm -hmm. It's all about the expansion, and she's hindering her expansion. Mm -hmm. Well, she told me if she wants to expand even more in her work. She needs to stop judging herself so much. Mm -hmm. Does she compare herself to others? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone in the world like her? No. Mm -hmm. She needs to just be herself. When a person is just authentically themselves, how does that work in life? We are all so judgmental. We need to just understand that's part of the human condition and not be judgmental against that. Mm -hmm. So why did Sarah come into this lifetime? What was the purpose of this one? We know that she was, she is Seraphim as an angel. Why did this angel choose to come back again and choose difficult circumstances in her family? She needs to be the light where she is. Mm -hmm. She needs to remind people to connect. How does she do that? She exudes it. Mm -hmm. She releases this energy. Wherever she goes, she doesn't believe this, but she does this. Is this her superpower? Yes. Mm -hmm. So can you explain what this energy is? She's vibrating healing energy throughout her space, wherever she goes. Mm -hmm. And we need her where she is. That's why she is in the Keys. That's why she's there. We need her there. But sh if she has all of these powers, why is it that everywhere she goes, things happen? Things are happening to her office, to her home. That is because she's so judgmental. Ah. So what does this mean? What are you trying to tell her? To stop judging herself, her office. Her clients come in and they don't care that there's a tarp as a ceiling right now. <laughs> she's the only one that's judging it. Mm -hmm. No one cares. Stop judging yourself so are these leaks this destruction a way to get her to stop judging yeah we try we try so you're trying everything to get her attention to yes. just let it go we had to bring her here because mm. she just will not stop uh -huh. judging herself she's an amazing being she just will not allow herself to accept it. Mm -hmm. So when she stops judging her office and actually starts appreciating it, appreciating the tarp, appreciating mm -hmm. all of those things that are helping her, will things change? Yes, we mm -hmm. will stop. All right. So who's the one causing all of this havoc? <laughs> are these her guides? Yes. Okay. What else are her guides trying to tell her that's driving her crazy? <laughs> we keep hiding her keys. Ah, so what is the purpose of hiding her keys? <laughs> She's always in a hurry. Mm -hmm. She needs to stop. And be. Be where you are. Well, she lives in a place where it should be pretty chill. Yes. Mm-hmm. But she's in too much of a hurry. Okay. So how should she be? She needs to enjoy this experience more. 
just do everything fun just wake up and just choose joy just it's just an experience. Don't be so serious. Just have fun. You're going to look back and it'll be short. Mm -hmm. Just have fun. Just eat the food. <laughs> Dance more. Just be. When we take her keys, we just want her to be still. We'll give them back. Where do you hide these keys? <laughs> How does that work? We've taken so many of her keys. <laughs> we'll give them back. We put them back in funny places and she doesn't know how they got there because she just looked there. Mm -hmm. So we, we also want her to know that we're here. Mm -hmm. We're always here. So she's been doing a lot of work on trying to improve her career. Mm -hmm. She wants to know if Dolores can assist her when she does QHHD <laughs> sessions. Yes. Mm -hmm. She wants to know how she's doing. She is excellent. Mm -hmm. Stop judging herself. So what message does Dolores can have for her today? You know, she says, you've got to write the name of the client on the paper because she keeps forgetting that. Mm -hmm. And this is a problem, and sh she could just listen to what sh she said. She would remember that. Mm -hmm. She should read more of her books, she mm -hmm. says. As a practitioner, what does reading her books help the practitioner with? To understand that it's the art form of questioning, mm -hmm. she says. Mm -hmm. That it's a process and a journey. That her books show that this took her life's work. It wasn't just answered in a minute. It was answered in a lifetime of work. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. And the art form was the questioning. That was her, her art form. So for all of those practitioners wanting to be better. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. It's a journey of an unfolding because it's not supposed to be right away. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to enjoy this experience and let it unfold because that's the excitement. Mm -hmm. the, oh, you learn something new. It's so exciting. Mm -hmm. She learned quite a few new tricks today, didn't she? Yes. She did. Mm -hmm. So, any other tips that Dolores would like to give? Well, Dolores says, don't be so serious. <laughs> She's so much younger mm -hmm. than the other side. She oh. looks like 35. Uh -huh. She's so radiant. She's, she doesn't want me to talk about her anymore. <laughs> so she doesn't want you talking about her physicality? Yes. Uh -huh. She just made a motion with her hand and like, said, Stop oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Anything about her work? that the other practitioners would want to hear. There's people all around the world now learning this technique, yes. using their own skills and abilities. It's practice. It's practice, mm -hmm. practice, practice. Mm -hmm. And that, and it's an unfolding. 
just take your time it's an experience almost like eating something take your time don't rush through it mm -hmm. it's going to unfold the more you do it the better you get and the more you learn just take your time mm -hmm. very good I was telling Sarah that the moment you learn something new the client shows up <laughs> yes mm -hmm. It's exactly like that, she says. Mm -hmm. So keep learning, keep reading. Keep learning, keep reading. It's an experience. Very good. And how is it that Dolores helps the practitioners? She says she can be with everyone because an aspect of her will always be with the person. Mm -hmm and to call upon her. If you have questions about QHHT, ask her. She'll tell you. She's not too famous, she says. <laughs> she'll tell you. She'll whisper it in your ear. Good. She had a question about hypnosis for children. And I know in QHHT, they don't work with children. She should do more of this. Mm -hmm. She can help many children. Mm -hmm. She can relate to them and expand on their gifts rather than their disabilities mm -hmm. and use this to their advantage. These things that the children have, are they truly disabilities? No, they're abilities. They flow with thought form. That's what Sarah doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. Kids with ADD mm -hmm. are more connected to source. They're flowing with thought energy. They can daydream and create faster than we can. Mm -hmm. This is an ability, not a disability. These kids can think greater than we can. Mm -hmm. We see something and it's the boring old way of thinking. These kids can think greater and broader than that. Mm -hmm. They are the new way. They don't have an outlet for this new way of thinking. So the teacher wants them to focus on something in the classroom and it's too boring for them. They can think greater than the teacher. They can think greater. They're tapped in. They're tuned in, tapped into the universe. Mm. They're flowing with creative thought energy. They could create in their mind. So yes, it's an ability. It's what we need to do more of is daydream mm. like they do. Mm -hmm. I heard from uh, Mary Rodwell that ADHD is always dialed into higher dimensions. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is that what these children are doing? Yes, they are all, they all have an ability. They're here to teach us. We need to learn from the children, not the other way around. So what advice would you like to give her to deal with a child that has this what they call ADD or uh, inability to focus on what we want them to focus on. How does she deal with that? Not doing their homework, not wanting to do their chores. For Sarah, she needs to focus her energy on imagining or visualizing her son happy at school and flowing her energy towards that. Okay. And all parents can do that. So rather than see them being troublemakers, see them happy right mm -hmm. see them happy flow energy towards that seeing them happy coming home from school first tell the child they know they know they have an ability connect with that because then they will connect back with you they just didn't know you recognized it mm. when you recognize them 
for who they are, they will connect with you. Mm -hmm. Is that the disconnect that's happening with teachers right now, that they don't connect with yes. children? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. They don't know. That's what's going on. So what advice would you give teachers who are in the know about this experience, about this? Allow the child to think greater. It's okay because our, our civilization, our school system has some advantages. So allow the child with the ADHD to think greater. Allow them to expand on the math problem. Do the math problem, but then expand with it in their mind. They can, if the teacher can understand that this is going to help the teacher as well, they will be willing. Do you think the teachers will learn also from these children? Yes, mm -hmm. this, these children are teaching the teachers mm -hmm. to change to expand. It's all about expansion. Mm -hmm. Did they come into this world for, with this agenda to change? Yes. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you would like to say about that? About how she can have a better relationship? Hmm. Children From the law of attraction, you manifest an aspect of yourself. You manifest something which you could not do in this life. You manifested a child that is more tapped and tuned in than you are because you could not Be as tapped in and tuned in in this life. So you manifest it. She has a question about the relationship with herself. Anything else we can improve on that? Yes. She needs to get a glass of water every day and focus love energy in it for about two minutes and then drink this water. What does that do? It's going to increase her vibration. It's going to help her love herself more. Mm -hmm. She needs to accept herself more but it's hard for her to do this so we need her to ask herself what would someone who loves themselves do before they do it we've heard this said before We want her to do this before she makes a decision every day. Ask, what would someone who loves themselves do so she can practice figuring out how to love herself more? So it's like life coaching for herself. Yes. Self-life coaching. Mm -hmm. Does she have to have anybody in mind or she just creates a scenario in her mind? She can best. just create. Okay. So someone who loves themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who is she really? We have talked about her being an angel between lifetimes. Seraphim. But who is she here? 
she is an angel. She is here to help. She is here to spread the light. Mm -hmm. So this angel started off her life with many complications, many challenges, many relationships that were pretty hurtful. Why did she choose that if she was here to help? She needed that contrast. Hmm. How does that help her to have that contrast? She came in knowing she wanted to help and she knew that she would have a difficult childhood. Mm -hmm. She needed that in order to grow from that. She had to experience the, the difficultness in order to experience all this positivity mm. that she can create now. So you couldn't have seen the light if you didn't know what darkness was? Yes. Mm -hmm. She chose this. Is she holding on to any of this darkness inside? Has she forgiven herself? Of creating it. She seems to have been holding on to things that are affecting her physically. She needs to forgive herself. Mm -hmm. Is she ready to do that now? Yes. All right. Would you allow me to assist you with this? Yes. Very good. So I'm going to put my hand over your chest, over your heart, and I want you to, for you to go into your entire body and begin pulling out all of this darkness that you created by resenting things, people, circumstances, not forgiving yourself for participating in this, allowing yourself to hold on to grudges that were meant to just slip away like water on a duck. All of these experiences that you wanted to experience were here to make you grow. And it's time now to reap the rewards and not hold on to the negativity of it. So pull it all out. And tell me when I have it all. Pull it out of your DNA. Every cell. You don't need to hold on to this any longer. Okay. All right, let's pull that out and send it to the universe. Now we have a very big space in your heart, in your whole body, for all of those wonderful things that you'd like to put in there. What would you like to put in now? Peace. Let's put lots of peace. Feel that peace going in to your heart, pumping it to every cell of your body as you just remain in that centered spot, calm, knowing that all is well, knowing that you have always created this for your growth and learning. And I'm going to tap your forehead and let's seal that in. What else would you like to put in there? Self-love. Mm -hmm. You'd put in a fire hose of love because without self-love, there's no way to love another. That's what comes in first. As they say on the airlines, you have to put the oxygen mask on first to help others. So let's put in all of that love because then you're helping people with power, with the power of love. Fill it every cell of your body with that love for yourself, knowing that you are perfect, that you came from the angelic realm to help others but you'd have to do it from the power of love. Anything else you'd like to put in there? You feel good? You feel good. Very good. Very good. Sarah wants to know, why did all of these times that she tried to buy 
a house. Why did it fall through? Why didn't she get this house? <laughs> we are laughing. Mm, you're laughing at her. <laughs> What's the purpose of that? She needs to just trust. Mm -hmm. Trust. We'll give her the right house. Just have faith. Well, she wants to know why. When? When will this happen? I know when, but I don't want to tell her. When. Okay. All right. So, what what would you like to do to tell her to just chill and relax? I just want her. We just want her to trust. We want her to experience this life. Mm -hmm. And learn how to trust because that is important. Just trust us. We're here with you always. We're always here. We're you and you're us. We're one and the same. We're all, all of us, the universe, all of us, we're all in this together. The light and the dark. We're all in this together. It's okay. Just trust. So is there a reason why she didn't get that house? Was it not it right It wasn't the her? right house. Okay, good. She wouldn't have been happy in that house. Okay. It was not the right house. It was, you know, it, she thought it was the right house. Mm -hmm. But it was not the right house. So the house where she's living now, is that going to be okay for a while? It's her ego mm. that wants a bigger house. Okay. She doesn't need a bigger house right now. Okay. So just relax. Just relax. Mm -hmm. What about her office? Where's her office? Her office. Okay. We want her to have this office like this right now. Okay. Because we want her to stop. The people that come in her office are so happy with the work that she does. They are so blown away by her. They feel so good when they leave that office that they forgot that there was a tarp for the ceiling. Mm -hmm. We want to leave it there for a while. Okay. okay. So she has to understand that it's her abilities and her... her. She, yes. They're coming to see her yes. and they don't care where they're going to see her. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. She could do it in a trailer. She could do it in a cabana. Yes. She could do it anywhere. If her, if her office was perfect all the time, she would not learn these lessons. So you need to trash her office every once in a while? Until she learns a lesson. Okay, good. Good. Is she learning? Or is that judgment rearing its ugly head again? She is learning. Okay, good. Good. She has questions about some of the things she's been hearing about the veil dropping soon. And what's yes. going to happen to her and her family? She needs to trust. Mm -hmm. It's all... From our perspective, it's not a big deal. But from a human perspective, it's scary. Mm -hmm. It's scary to have all these hurricanes, the fires, the soon tornadoes coming, the earthquakes coming. Oh my gosh, all that scary. We know, we know. Mm -hmm. But you are just playing a role. You are here for this experience. This amazing learning experience. You need to feel lucky to be here now. You are lucky to have a front row ticket to learn this experience. We are learning through you. You are learning through us. We are all connected with you. You are all connected with us. In the same way you feel it's scary, it's scary to us in an aspect of ourselves. She will be fine. 
Your family will be fine. Just trust. What do you tell someone who has just lost their home in a fire and has nothing now? There is always a reason for this. Look for the reason. There is always a greater, bigger picture. It is terrible to lose your house, yes, but there is always a bigger picture, always a reason. Perhaps you were not happy at that house. Perhaps you needed to move and you just needed a reason to move. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you wanted to do something different across the world and now because of this you are going to finally move. Perhaps this is an opportunity to join a different family. These disasters are bringing many families together. These disasters are helping the world form together. These disasters are helping. These disasters are also These disasters are also Mother Earth releasing energy. Mm -hmm. You are Mother Earth too. Does everybody have to go through the disasters? No. It is the meaning behind suffering that causes the suffering. Mm -hmm. You could just Find peace within yourself. All the answers are here. We are here with you, always. So we just have to trust that inner voice when something happens? Trust the inner voice. It is the impulse. The inner voice mm -hmm. is the first thought you think. Don't analyze, don't analyze it. Mm -hmm. So if something tells you, pack up your car and go. Go. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Trust the first, the first impulse. Mm -hmm. It's not really a thought. Hmm. It's, it could manifest as a thought, but it's the first thing that enters your body. Mm -hmm the impulse, the thought, or the energy that enters you. Is this how animals are guided with yes. this, this instinct? Yes, they mm -hmm. don't, they don't analyze, mm -hmm. so they are tuned in. Now, you talk about the disasters, but is this different from the veil dropping? When the veil drops, this will be scary for people. What is it like to have the veil drop? What would it be? What would it feel like? It's going to be hard for humans because this illusion that we have created, you've created, will not be there anymore. The illusion will be gone. Can you tell me what this illusion is that we've created? The illusion is that we are separate. Hmm. But the illusion there is a lot to this illusion. It is complicated. It is almost like different for different people. Mm -hmm. Can you give me, for example, one scenario of what the veil would be? Um, what would it be like to drop this veil for one particular type of person? For one person that is doing a lot of harm, say, in your government, who is egotistical, 
and only cares about money and doesn't care about other people it is going to feel they are going to wish they were not here mm -hmm. they are going to feel suicidal why is that? because they won't know how to handle it mm -hmm. what will they, what would they feel like? They, will they be feeling emotions of others or or what? what? what would make them feel so suicidal? or is it a is it an inner uh, acknowledgement of it's, what they've done. It's an inner acknowledgement. Okay. Now is the time to help others. It's not about yourself. This ascension, this new earth, is not about you. Hmm. It's about others. It's about helping others, expanding it's about you in a sense that it's about self-love creating more love but also what can you do for others hmm. okay so when we help others we're using our own abilities is that it yes okay so for example when I do these sessions and I put them out throughout the world they're awakening yes people. Okay, so what is Sarah's ability? Is it her energy? Is her ability to also do the hypnosis with others? She is a healer. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. She can do hypnosis, but she could do other things if she wanted to. But we want her to do the hypnosis she is sending out vibrations wherever she goes mm -hmm. and it is helping awaken others even if she doesn't talk to them how does it affect them? They have no idea what's happening. <laughs> okay, good. So you had talked about when the veil drops for a certain politician who's not very nice. What about your normal average person? For some people, it's going to be a good thing. Mm -hmm. For some people, they are going to see what they already knew almost mm -hmm. so it'll be like validation yes okay we will be able to communicate with the other side so for example if you've lost your mother or father will the lifting or the lowering of the veil allow us to communicate with them directly? Yes. Will we be able to see them? We will be able to see them, but it is more emotional. Okay. This is more emotional. Okay. So you'll be able to feel them? Feel them, mm -hmm. yes. And as I say in some of my sessions, you'll just know? The knowing, yes. Mm -hmm will increase with the people that are trying to do good things, mm -hmm. help others. This will be an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. Now I've also heard that people will be able to see things differently. Will we be, we be able to see through the matrix? There is a matrix. Mm -hmm. It is too complicated for human language mm -hmm. for me to explain it to you. Okay. Can you give me the kindergarten version? Um, it, 
it's each each person creates their own version of it. Right. Your version of the matrix is different than this personality's mm -hmm. version. Yes, we will be able to see through it to some extent. There's so much more that we do not know, that you humans do not know. Mm -hmm. If you could see it from our angelic perspective, our perspective from where we are, you would not worry so much. Mm. You are always being taken care of. Is that where the trust comes in? We are here for you. No. You just ask us. We are always here. Your angels are always here for you. Anytime you need us. And we will take care of you. Are there any limits to what we ask our angels for? No. Mm -hmm. No. For example... Sarah wants to be healed. She's been dealing with something that she can't seem to get rid of. If she can release her judgment towards it, mm -hmm. then it would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. So that's again part of the judgment of things she we can heal her all right can you begin today yes all right she wants to know if she's healthy overall because she's been getting headaches recently this body is so healthy mm. But she gets headaches because she is too focused on worrying. Ooh. She needs to stop worrying so much. It's an unfolding. Everything happens. At its own pace, it's okay if you have a bad experience. Stop worrying. This is just an experience. Mm -hmm. It's okay to make a mistake. You don't have to be perfect. Is there such thing? There's no <laughs> such thing. <laughs> it's a part of the human experience. Mm -hmm. Don't worry so much. So is there any way that she can be healthier? You say that she's very healthy. It's hard to be healthy in your environment. Mm -hmm. There's, she could stay away from all meat products. Mm -hmm. Something that's affecting her is that for this body, not all bodies, mm -hmm. for this body, Meat is not a good idea mm -hmm. because the animal proteins from the meat are blocking her third eye. Mm -hmm. She wanted that opened. She can open it. She needs she needs to stay away from meat and Dairy is really, really bad for humans. What what does dairy do to us? If you humans knew how bad dairy was, 
he would not eat it. What does it do to you? It's almost like putting a shell over a person. It creates holes in their auras. Hmm. It is very polluted. What is it polluted with? Many chemicals mm -hmm. so that you cannot communicate with your higher self. It is put there in, in per, on purpose. Mm -hmm. What about those people who have their own farms and have their, they make their own dairy products? That's different. Okay. For the general mm -hmm. population, dairy products are not a good idea. All right. In this current reality. Mm -hmm. Now for a person that believes that dairy products are good for them, they could create that in their reality. Mm -hmm. And it would not harm them. But for the general population, however, if a person creates a reality in which dairy products are good for them, they would have to believe this 100%. Okay. How do you get someone off of the addiction of, of dairy? Cheese, for example, which is so addicting. This body loves cheese. Mm -hmm. First, it is important to understand that it is an addiction. Mm -hmm. And do not have judgments about it against yourself or against others. Addiction is difficult mm -hmm. for everyone. But you can use us to help you. We can help you. Mm -hmm. So when I ask in my sessions for a guide to assist them with that, do they step up and help? Yes. All right. So can I ask for a guide on her behalf, an angel? Yes. That will help her with the addiction to dairy, the addiction to meat, yes. and begin opening up that third eye? Yes. Thank you. And can I ask also for them to scan her body? Have all of you scan it? And as a collective, tell me what's going on with her body. She has an attachment. Okay. Where is this attachment? Right in her belly button. In her belly button. Would you allow me to speak with an attachment? Let's see yes. if we can send them home. Thank you very much. So I'm going to bring my hand up to the belly button area and bring, bring that energy up, 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 up. Good morning. Mm. Are you male or female? Female. Female. What may I call you, please? Cindy. Cindy. How old are you, please? Seven. Seven. Cindy, how long have you been there with Sarah? Since she was very little. Mm -hmm. Cindy, what attracted you to Sarah? She was suffering so much. Mm -hmm. I could easily get in. And Cindy, how did you lose your body? I was beaten. Who beat you? My father. Mm. So what did you get from being in Sarah's body. She's such a light. Mm -hmm. First I thought I went home. Mm -hmm. But I could go along the ride of this life with her. Experience this with her. Mm -hmm. And she didn't know I was here. Have you caused her any issues? Yes. What have you done to mm -hmm. Sarah? 
shyness mm -hmm. and shame. Mm -hmm. She had a difficult childhood, mm -hmm. just like, like I did, mm -hmm. and I felt connected with her. And I felt ashamed of myself, like she did. Are you ready to go home now, Cindy? Yes. So what would you like to tell Sarah about all of these things that you've caused her all these years? You've been with her a long time. I'm sorry. What? You're such a kind person. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Cindy, inside of you, there's a little white light. It's a little spark. This spark comes from the Creator, the one that created you. You're always connected. Find that spark and let me know when you find it. I found it. Mm -hmm. So now, Cindy, I want you to use your mind and your power to go ahead and expand that light and make it as big as you are. Feel that light expand. And tell me how it feels to be light. I feel so good. Mm -hmm. So now, Cindy, that you feel so good, I'd like for you to go ahead and begin removing your energy from Sarah. Begin pulling all of those cords that attach and disconnecting them like roots. Pull them all out. Let's not leave anything inside of our body. Pull it all out. And I want Sarah to go ahead inside the body and make sure that there's nothing left of Cindy there. Okay. Very good. So Cindy, I want you to use that same white light to go ahead and beam it into that area where you were residing for so long. Feel, feel this woman with beautiful white light so that Sarah can feel your love. But before you go, Cindy, I need you to do something for me. I want you to go back in time. And I want you to revisit that lifetime of yours. And tell me, what was the purpose that you lived that life? Was there anything there that you needed to work out with your father? Yes. What was that? Now I see that. Mm -hmm. What was the story? I had killed him before. You had killed him before. He was just an innocent little child. Mm -hmm. And I killed him. Can you forgive yourself for having done that to this little child that later became your father? Yes. Can you forgive your father for not knowing any better that he came here and was doing something to just work out karma with you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you understand that now? Yes. Can you release this and let it go? Yes. Very good. Are you ready to go home now, Cindy? Yes. Thank you. So again, I'd like for you to go up through the top of her head and Archangel Michael is right there waiting for you. Tell me when you see him. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Take his hand and he's going to take you directly home to Source. To the real home. And tell me what happens when you reach there. I see my father. Mm -hmm. How do you see him now? I love you. Mm -hmm. And you see him from a different light now. Yes. Very good. Give him an embrace and may the love, light of the universe always accompany you, Cindy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very good. So I'd like to speak with the higher self again. And I'd like for you to go ahead and fill that area with that beautiful light of yours. And tell Sarah what color you're using. To heal blue. her. Blue. Very good. Let me know when you're done. I 
second time. Very good. Would you continue scanning her body and see if there's anything else in her body that we need to tend to today? Something in her throat. Okay. Is that is that something that's an entity or is that a thought form? That's a thought form. All right. So let's find out what was the origin of that thought form. I'd like for you to take her back in time to see when she created this thought form. She created it when she was with her father. All right. Let's find out what was the purpose of her creating this form. She felt like she shouldn't speak her truth. Mm -hmm. And so she created this. So how has this thought form been affecting her all this time? She's been afraid to speak her truth. Mm -hmm. Who she is. Is this benefiting her? She thinks it is mm -hmm. because she's afraid of what people think or judgments against her. Mm -hmm. What would you like to tell her about that? Be yourself. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Very good. So let's take a deep breath in. So are you ready to transform this thought form? Yes. All right. Now, we cannot eliminate it or send it home because you created it, but we can transform it. I'd like for you to look at this thought form and tell me what color is this thought form? It's in? purple. Mm -hmm. Like dark. Dark. What color should it be? It should be white. Very good. So I'd like for you to begin transforming it, but we need to give it a new role. What would you like this to be now? What would you like this thought form that you created? to help you with. Clear communication. Very good. Very good. So let's begin changing that dark purple form into this white communication powerhouse that you'll be able to use. Mm -hmm. Tell me how that feels. It feels so good. Mm -hmm. Do you feel any changes in your throat? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. I feel clear. Very good. Thank you so much. So let me speak with the higher self and ask, how do you see this change affecting Sarah in the future? This will help her a lot. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So I'd like for you to continue going through her body and see if there's anything else. She needs to remove the thought form from her head. All right. Is this what's giving her the headaches? Yes. All right. So let's find out what that thought form is all about. I'd like for you to take her back to the origin of that thought form and see. What did, where did it come from? When did she create it? She was in utero. Mm -hmm. She heard her father say to her mother that he was hoping for a boy. Mm -hmm. So when she heard that, what did it do to her? She felt she had already disappointed someone. Mm -hmm. So what did she create in her mind? She created this form, this block where she does not want to disappoint anyone. Mm -hmm. Is that possible to not disappoint anyone? <laughs> no. No, because they have their own judgments, don't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, what would we like to change this thought form into now? We want to change it into self-love. All right. So I'd like for you to take a deep breath in, Sarah. Take a look at this thought form and see what color this thought form is. Black. Black. All right. And in order for you to have self-love, what color does self-love look like? It looks like a beautiful white, gold-ish color. Beautiful. So we cannot eliminate this thought form, but we can transform it into this beautiful whitish golden 
light inside of you to be able to transmit this beautiful self-love to yourself. So go ahead and begin transforming that thought form now. It's, it's time. Wonderful. So as the higher self, what do you see this this trans, transfer of, of energy to do to her now? This transformation. She will be she will be able to love herself more. Wonderful. And when she loves herself more, how will that help her family? Her clients? It will help everyone. Wonderful. Around her. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. So let's continue scanning the body and see if there's anything else. Her feet. Mm -hmm. What's going on with her feet? She needs to be more grounded. Mm -hmm. It feels. She needs to ground herself more. All right. So would you like to tell her how she needs to ground herself? Yes. Go outside. Take your shoes off. Do this once a day. Does she need to be on the grass or in the or anywhere? For this body, yes. Okay, so she needs to go outside yes. and walk in the grass. How long yes. does she need to do this? Just for a few minutes. Okay. This will help her a lot. Wonderful. Wonderful. What else do you see? She is good. She's good. Very good. So you brought her here from a long distance. And I'd like to know, what was the purpose of bringing her to this session today? You needed to unblock her. Mm -hmm. We need her to understand her role right now. It's so important. Mm -hmm. What is her role? She needs to continue to help by spreading her love and her energy mm -hmm. and to practice. As the Laura mm -hmm. said, practice, practice, practice? Yes. Mm -hmm. She is helping. She is doing a good job. We want her to know. Do you have any advice for anyone else? Yes. We, f we feel that there are some people that might watch this that are sad. They don't want to be here. They want to go home. We want you to understand it, it is so important that you are here. The people that are sad and are thinking about ending it, you are so important. You have a role, you have a purpose, you have, you are so much greater than what you think. Let us connect with you. Be open to this connection. You are so important. Any advice on how to handle this shift coming, this new earth? Yes. Mm -hmm. For some, this is going to be difficult, but because they do not want to see just allow, just trust you are 
You are always okay. You are always being taken care of. But now is the time to do the inner work. Now is the time to go throughout yourself and find out what it is you need to release. What is not benefiting you. And now is also the time to think what you can do to help others. When you're afraid, you're afraid, you feel like you're not good enough. Just do it anyway because it is not you doing it. It is us. We are helping. The but, new mm-hmm, go ahead. earth is funny because what one person experiences is not what another person experiences. But for this personality, this person, the new earth will be different She has been on the new earth many times. You have been on the new earth. What does the new earth feel like to Sarah? It feels like paradise. Mm -hmm. For someone else it may be different. Mm -hmm. Many people ask, will our loved ones be on the new earth with us? Will they make it? I think that's the greatest concern. Yes, this is this personality's concern. Mm -hmm. It is not something to concern yourself with. But to enjoy this experience. For some, they may have their whole family. But you can always If you go to the new earth without your family, you can go visit them. Mm. Will they know? <clears throat> Will they know it's you? No. Mm. But more and more people are waking up. Now, when Sarah started this session today, she saw herself as this man who was tortured and she had to leave her son behind. Yes. And she went back home. But she said that her son was okay. We can see our families and loved ones and know that they are okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Will that happen when we're on the new earth? Is that what you're saying? Yes and no, because we can still keep an aspect of us on the old earth for our family. Okay. We are multidimensional. We can be in more than one place. So a lot of people ask, On the new earth, will I have a physical body? You create a body. Mm. So for the person who wants to look younger, healthier, fit, that's what their body will look like? Yes, but it won't be so important. Okay. Unless it is important to that Mm -hmm. personality. Okay. Now, during this whole session, you talk about we... Can you explain to Sarah who the we is that's speaking to her? How can you describe yourself to her? We are collective of the 
angelic realm. Mm -hmm. We are all that is as well, just like a current of the ocean is the ocean. We are all that is as well as the angels. So will we describe that also as the higher self, or is that something different? It is the same thing. It is the same thing. So is the part of Sarah that is connected with all it is? Yes. All right, good. Is that a good description? Yes. Mm -hmm. So when we connect with that inner voice, that instinct, that pulse that comes in to tell us what to do, are yes. we connecting to source? Yes. Okay, good. So we need to trust that no matter what. Yes. Mm hmm Wonderful, even if it seems insignificant. Yes. All right, good. Do you have anything else to say today to Sarah or to me or to anyone else? These children that are coming in, let them teach us. Be open to it. Let them explain to us what it is that we need to know, not the other way around. So we have a lot of learning to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Is there anything else that you would like to tell Sarah today? Or do we feel that you're complete now? She is doing a good job. We are complete. Thank you very much. Wonderful oh color. Welcome back. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't think I remember much of it. <laughs> Did yeah. you feel like you were sleeping? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird. But I feel amazing though. Good. Good. How long do you feel you were on this journey? Like five minutes. Oh, it's an hour and a half. Oh my gosh. That's so <laughs> weird. That's so weird. It wasn't five minutes. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, that feels so strange. <laughs> I can't believe that. I can't believe an hour and a half? Yeah, well, we're really an hour and 36 minutes right now, but yes, an hour oh. and a half. That's so strange. <laughs> well, as a hypnotherapist. I know, I should know these things, but I mean, I know. When it's it just, happens to you. Yeah, it's so different. It's You yeah. need to experience the other way around. Yeah. Yeah, usually are. I'm on the other side. Mm -hmm. So uh, your body feels amazing? I feel absolutely amazing. How does your throat feel? Like amazing. Yeah, and your head? My head feels really good. Yeah. I do remember I had an attachment. Mm. Yeah, I remember the hat and something with my head. Yeah. Cindy? Yeah, I remember girl. that. Yeah. It's interesting how you don't remember the other part, but you remember that part. The yeah. human part. The human part. When I brought you back in. Yeah. Is when you remembered. Interesting. Wow. So this is what it feels like on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. So it, this seemed to have a message for a lot of people. Oh, it did? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we <laughs> talked funny. about the new earth. We talked about the veil coming down. Really? Yeah, we talked about ch you did? The children. Yeah, we talked about the new kids. Oh, wow. Uh, ADHD. <laughs> really? Yeah, we talked about them hiding your keys all the time. Yes, how, my keys and are how your tarp going is missing. Going, and how your tarp is going to keep be there for a little while longer <laughs> until you stop judging it. Oh, my gosh, this is really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You were an angel in between lifetimes? <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So this is a hard one to ask you if you want to if you want to share this. I um, mean if you feel like it was beneficial. Yeah, people. I would I would edit out a few things okay. there that are personal, which I do okay. with everybody. But yeah, I think that was awesome. Especially okay. if you don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember bits and pieces. Not very much though. I thought it was five minutes. 
Interesting. So it's, that's an, you were somnambulist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how is this experience? It's co totally different than most of my my um, um, clients. So tell everybody how you felt. Yeah. I didn't know as a hypnotherapist. I didn't think I could go out that yeah. fast and see. <laughs> this is something that a lot of people come to me saying, I don't think I could be hypnotized. And I'm sure you... <laughs> I didn't think I could be hypnotized. So Honestly, what would you like to tell hard. everybody about what it's um, like to be in hypnosis and what you feel now? And well, I feel amazing. Mm -hmm. What it's like to be in hypnosis is it's just an amazing experience. You mm -hmm. feel so good, so blissful, so serene. And Alba is amazing. Thank you, but <laughs> she's also a therapist. So, mm -hmm. so you were given a lot of kudos also by your higher self, oh, saying really? how good you were. Oh. <laughs> so what kind of things do you experience in your own practice that you would like to tell people? Um, what do you mean experience? Yeah, like with other clients. Like, like what do you see that, that this can help them with? Oh, um, any phobias, any, you know... Um, any addictions, mm -hmm. and I do QHHT as well, mm -hmm. and I help children with um, problems like uh, wetting the bed or stop mm -hmm. sucking their thumb. Mm -hmm. Now, you were trained by somebody different, so mm -hmm. what's, what, what training do you have? Um, I was trained by Dr. Brian Weiss, um, certified in past life regression therapy, mm -hmm. and um, I also... Uh, studied Dolores Cannon's QHHT and I'm certified. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been practicing? Um, nine years. It's a long time. <laughs> so is um, is there a way that people could contact you? Sure. Um, my website is www.theholistichypnotist.com. There you go. And uh, she is in the Keys, mm -hmm. in the Florida Big Keys. Key. Yes. Big Pine. And uh, she doesn't want everybody to know, but she has a tarp. Her, in her in her office, <laughs> so messed up by the hurricane and yeah. the water went through the ceiling. Yeah. There's a tarp. It's not perfect right now. So if you go to her office, you can tell her how perfect her <laughs> office is, so that she can feel better about it. <laughs> what we're basically your higher self basically said is like, people are there for your skills, not for the, not the way your office looks. So. <laughs> yeah. So you have to learn a lot about that mm -hmm. too. So yes. we're all here to learn. This is an experience and um, we can't judge it. We just have to trust. And one of the most important things that I got from it is you have to trust your instinct. Mm -hmm. When they tell you to do something, do it. Mm -hmm. So if you're told, you know, go somewhere, go somewhere. <laughs> don't, don't question it. Don't analyze it. Just like animals have that instinct. We're connected with them. We're connected with that angelic realm, with the, the, the source. And when we get that gut feeling that we should do something, do it. Just like you probably wanted to come here. Yes, <laughs> I did. I feel so lucky that so I did got you to come here. So did you have any expectations? No, I didn't know what to expect. I just wanted to see what it was like to be on the other side. And, and now I know. Yeah, it's wild. It's good. It's yeah, good. it's really good. So if you want a session with me, just go to albawyman.com. I am booked in Miami for a long time, but I do travel all around the world. So just go to my out-of-town page, subscribe to my newsletter, and I will let you know where I'm going to be going to next. And the, the newsletters has, has links to my calendar when those sessions are available. And they go within minutes, so you have to be fast. So if you enjoyed the session, um, you know, but just watch the rest of them. I think they're all really good. And I hope to see you sometime soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.